This video will help you use a baseline 5406 pressure bicoder and a separate lake level transducer to monitor water levels in your lake, pond, or tank. Baseline pressure sensors can be used to indicate water levels in bodies of water and even automate decisions based on those levels. Here's the hardware you'll need to make this happen. A base station 3200, a BL5406 pressure bicoder, a separate lake level transducer, and of course your body of water like a lake, cistern, or wet well. My lake level transducer is made by Dwyer. It's model number SBLT2-5-40, but there are several others on the market. This particular one has a 0 to 5 PSI range and comes with a 40 foot long cord. Be sure to order one that fits your application in your expected pressure range. Start by hanging the transducer portion in the water as low as practical. Connect the output wires to the sensor side of the bicoder with waterproof splices. Once the transducer is attached, connect the bicoder to the two-wire path. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for connecting with the included DBRY-6 splices. Make sure that you get the red and the black wire polarity correct. Here's how to use your installed sensor to monitor water levels. Open Base Manager, go to Devices, and search the wire path for pressure sensors. Now give your new sensor a unique name and then save before leaving. Now that it's assigned, I can use the test function to see the water pressure, or I can go to Quick View and see the pressure there as well. This pressure reading of 3.7 psi corresponds to the water level in the wet well. Each foot of water offers 0.433 psi, so a wet well that's 10 foot deep will show 4.33 psi when it's completely full. The same well will read 2.16 psi when it's half full and 1.08 psi when it's a quarter full. The next time the sensor reads 3.7 psi, the water level will be at that same mark every single time. Besides monitoring, we can use this data to automate irrigation decisions. Creating a water source empty condition will discontinue the use of a water source when the sensor indicates that the water source or our wet well is empty and unusable. Begin at the Flow Setup tab, go to Water Sources, then select Edit. Select Add Empty Condition to see the different sensor options. Since I've named my pressure sensor earlier, it's easy to find that device. At Empty Condition PSI, I'll set it to less than 0.86 PSI. That pressure corresponds with two feet of water, the lowest level that I'm willing to accept before the pump runs dry. For wait time, I'll try out 240 minutes or four hours. Now it's a matter of checking enabled and then saving the program. Here's what happens with these values. When the water level in the wet well drains down to that lowest level and the sensor reads 0.86 PSI or less, this water source can't be used and it's taken offline. After four hours, it will check to see if the water level has come up again. If the level has increased and there's more than 0.86 PSI at the sensor, the wet well water source, the one that's connected to our pump, will start watering again. If the well is still dry or below that two foot level, it'll wait another four hours before checking again. Water source empty conditions are a great way to ensure that a wet well or other water source is not used when the water level is too low. Here's another way to automate decisions with the data. Start a cistern fill program based on the water level. Begin at the schedules tab, add a new program, then name it. Select the zone that fills the tank, Mine is zone 6. At a runtime for the zone, I'll use 120 minutes. You'll need to do some math to make sure that the cistern fills up in two hours, but doesn't overfill either. Make sure that the entire water window is available, remove the start time, and allow only start days. Date and time are the most common conditions to start a program, but not the only ones. For our cistern, select Add a Condition from the dropdown and use a pressure sensor to start a program. At the device list, I'll make sure that I'm using my previously assigned pressure sensor. I want the pressure limit to be less than 0.86 PSI, so it reflects that lower two foot water limit. Once I click save, program 10 will start when the water level is low enough for the pressure sensor to read 0.86 PSI or less. Zone six is the only zone in this program and it will run for two hours, filling the cistern back up. There may be times when you can't calculate the fill time, but still want to avoid overfilling the cistern. To do that, 
I'll change the runtime so that there's more than enough time to fill it up, maybe four hours. There will be instances when a four hour runtime overfills the cistern, so we want to stop before then. We've already set a program start based on pressure. Let's set a stop based on pressure. Select add a condition, and from the dropdown, use a pressure sensor to stop a program. At the device list, I'll make sure I'm using the same sensor that I used before. I want the pressure limit to be 4.3 PSI or above, so it reflects the upper limit of my 10 foot deep cistern. Be sure to unclick finish run so the program stops sooner than the four hour runtime. It's also a good idea to allow a little room before the overfill happens to allow for controller response time. Here's what happens with the programming. When the cistern drains down to that lowest level and the sensor reads 0.86 PSI or less, program 10 will start filling it. The program can run as long as four hours, but when the pressure sensor reads 4.3 PSI or more, the program will stop before the cistern overfills.